Let's go over my plans for these six mug rugs and do a little bit of math. So in this video, we're going to be making simple patchwork mug rugs. They're going to measure 12 inches from left to right and 8 inches from the top to the bottom. We're doing simple chain piecing with 2.5 inch squares to come up with the top of our mug rug. I have one, two, three, four, five, six squares going across and four squares going down. So for each mug rug, I'm going to need 24 squares. I'm making six mug rugs. There's 24 pieces times six mug rugs. That gives me 144 two and a half inch squares that we need to make the tops of our mug rug. And then for this project, I was given 10 pieces of clothing. So if we want to divide up how many squares, because I want this to be multiple colors using all the different 10 pieces of clothing, I figured out that if I cut 15 squares from each one of our 10 garments, that would give me enough to divide between all six mug rugs and be able to incorporate all 10 articles of clothing in each one. For the back of the mug rug, I'd also like to use the larger pieces of clothing. So I'm going to cut panels that are slightly bigger than my mug rug top, leaving me about an inch uh, extra all the way around my mug rug. So for the backs, I'll be looking for uh, panels of fabric that are about Let's see, 14 by 10 inches, and we can use that as the back and binding for our mug rugs. So next, let's move over and I'll show you how I cut apart a button front shirt so that I get the most use out of the fabric, and we'll start there today. We're going to walk through how I cut apart a button front shirt so that I get the most use out of all of the fabric. The first thing I do is unbutton the shirt and I'm going to remove the front plackets where the buttons are, the buttons and the button holes. I'm just going to cut up right along that seam and then I'm going to cut right around the collar and remove this whole section. I'll save the buttons for future projects. Next I'm going to remove the sleeves by cutting around the armholes and just setting those to the side. I'm going to take my scissors and cut along the shoulder area so that I can open up the fronts of the shirts. I cut out that little side seam and I cut off the bottom hem and there's one front panel. We'll do the same thing on the other side, removing that side seam, removing the bottom hem, and there's our second front panel. For the back of the shirt, I like to cut off that bottom hem and then remove the shoulder yoke. Oftentimes you'll find little pleats that open up and iron flat when you remove the yoke area. And that gives us a great big panel of fabric to work with. And then I come back to the sleeves. I remove the seam from the armhole and the bottom seam and then remove the hem. And that gives us a great piece of fabric as well, even with a short sleeve shirt. Of course, the long sleeve shirts give you a little bit more fabric to work with. And here is all of our usable fabric. And we have very, very little waist of the shirt. Of course, you could separate the collar and the shoulder yoke as well. And don't forget about your buttons. Now let's move over to the ironing board. And we're going to be using in this project the Pelon P44F fusible interfacing on the back side of our clothing. I have one piece of our clothing here, and I'm just going to cover the clothing and interfacing with a scrap piece of fabric. Then I'm going to fuse that right into place with my iron, and I'm going to do this for each one of my 10 pieces of clothing. Once we have that done, we can go ahead and cut out our pieces. Moving over to the cutting mat, I have the interfacing on each one of my pieces. To speed up the process, sometimes I will double or triple my layers of fabric. 
and cut out multiple pieces at one time. I like to make sure if there are stripes on my fabric that they are running straight along the cutting mat. And I'm going to cut longer strips that measure two and a half inches wide. And I'll get two of those. And then I'm going to turn them and we are going to cut our square pieces two and a half inches the other direction as well. We can just go right along this strip and create multiple pieces. Once I've cut my two strips, I can separate and divide each one of the different clothing types into piles. And I will do this for each one of my 10 fabrics. Here are my piles all cut and sorted and we're ready to start playing with some layouts with our squares. I think this is the fun part. <laughs> I'm going to go through and divide all of the 10 different fabrics into six mug rug piles. I want to make sure that each one of the six mug rugs contains at least two of the 10 fabrics. So I'm going to go through my 10 piles and sort them out. And then I will have a pile of extras and those will be divided amongst the six mug rugs as needed. At this time, if you come across any clothing that has stains, you can just put that little tiny square aside or any squares that didn't get cut exactly square and straight, you can also discard those. Now we have our six individual piles for our mug rugs and now we can break apart each one of the stacks and start sorting our squares into the layout for our mug rug. This is when we can start to get creative with the different patterns of the fabric. Some stripes I like to go horizontal and some vertical just to change it up a little bit. Once you have your layout, we're ready to start sewing. Now we're going to be doing some chain piecing with a quarter inch seam allowance. We'll piece together the first and second rows. And then while we're still at the machine, we're going to bring in the third and fourth rows and piece those together. Once we've pieced together all of our two block units, we're going to separate the rows. Keeping them together, I'm going to go press my seams. Pressing our seams in opposite directions will allow us to nest our seams between the two units. And once they're pressed, we're going to create some four patches. Turn the pretty sides facing each other right across rows one and two and bring those to the sewing machine. We will now be creating four patches. You can nest the seams right in the middle and sew these with a quarter inch seam allowance and I piece these together by chain piecing. It just speeds up the process. And once you have your four patches, you can join those together, nesting that middle seam, and this will create your top unit, rows one and two, and you will repeat the process for rows three and four.
Remember to press as you're going along, keeping all of those seams nice and flat. At this point, we'll have a top section and a bottom section with one more seam to sew. We'll flip this right side down onto the bottom section and we're going to piece this again with a quarter inch seam allowance, nesting up our seams as we go along. Now we have our completed mug rug top. We will go and give this a final press. Then we will layer our mug rug. You'll see I have the top of my mug rug. I've cut a batting piece the same exact size and our backing piece. I like to use a glue stick to base my layers. You could use pins if you like. This just makes it quick and simple and I have no pins in my way. I will be drying the glue with a good hot iron and a pressing cloth over top. This protects your iron from getting any extra glue on it and protects your clothing pieces. Now comes the fun part of quilting our mug rugs. For these mug rugs, I'm going to do a simple stitch in the ditch between all of my blocks. Of course, you could do any kind of quilting that you preferred. You could do free motion quilting. You could do loop-de-loops. You could do a meandering stitch. Go through and quilt your mug rug and I'll bring you along as I quilt mine. For this particular mug rug, I'm using a white thread in the top and a black thread in the bobbin. I like to match my bobbin thread to my backing fabric and I like my quilting on the top to blend in. Once we're done with the quilting part, we will bring it over to the cutting mat one more time and square up and trim our backing fabric. I like to trim mine to an inch beyond my mug rug and we will use that as the binding. Again, I have a glue stick. This just speeds up the process. I start on the first side and apply a little bit of glue and fold my binding right in half so the raw edge of the binding comes to the edge of the mug rug. Apply a little bit more glue and then we're going to fold that binding right over top of our mug rug, drying the glue with a good hot iron as we go along. I will repeat the process on the exact opposite side of my mug rug. And then we're going to start on the other sides. I start with my corners, apply a little bit of glue, and fold that corner to a 90 degree angle. And then I'm going to apply a little bit more glue and fold that binding in half, matching the raw edge to the mug rug. And then last, I'm going to apply a little bit more glue and fold the binding right up onto the mug rug. I do have a full tutorial showing you step-by-step -step how to do this self-binding method. If you want to check that out, I'll put a card right up above. It's a quick and easy way to finish off your smaller projects. Once all the glue is dry, we're going back to the sewing machine one more time. And to finish our mug rug, we're just going to do a straight stitch all the way around our mug rug in the binding. And this secures our binding and finishes our mug rug project.
here we are with our finished mug rug. I just finished sewing down the binding. So we can take a close look at what the front is. And that's just with a simple quilting uh, stitch in the ditch, straight line quilting. And we'll take a look at the back too. I used a black thread and so the quilting just blends right in, just like you see there. And then as I showed in this video, I used the back as the binding and finishes off that very nicely. So now I just have five left to do and these go together pretty quick. What I love about these, it's quilted and finished and you can throw these in the wash. You could use them as snack mats with a coffee and a snack. I like to use them on my desk, have my coffee here and use this portion as a mouse pad. So I really like the size of this 12 by eight. And so yes, my client is going to really love these. Imagine all of the memories in the 10 articles of clothing that we've split up between the six mug rugs. So I hope that you've enjoyed today's video and that you found it helpful. Again, very, very simple technique. I hope I hope that some of the tips that I showed in today's video is helpful for you, especially if you're just learning how to sew or to quilt. If you have any questions, I would love it if you jump down to the comment section and you can ask them there. And I would love to see copies of your mug rug. A link to the Creative Crew group will be in the description box as well. I'm off to finish the rest of my mug rugs. I hope you have an awesome week. Have fun crafting. Bye.